what were the investigative steps they were taking while he's sitting in the car? All the complaint says is that he was detained for a brief period in the car while a supervisor who the complaint says was in the building next to them showed up what, moments. What's the investigative purpose that the complaint alleges? Seeking identity, Your Honor, which Supreme Court case after Supreme Court case right. after Supreme Court case. Yeah, but, but you part. know, I'm sure you know, Texas law is not like Louisiana law. You cannot ask for an identity card under the Texas law after Texas v. Brown unless you can lawfully arrest them. That's different no. than... It's not a crime under Texas law, but absolutely well, as part of the investigation, you can seek identity. It's not a crime for the... But what's the crime justifying the detention? Like, in all these traffic stop cases where we agonize about how long they can keep him in the car, they're getting a dog because they have reasonable suspicion of drugs. They're going to do a show up because they have reasonable suspicion of bank robbery. What in the allegation, only in the allegation, says that they were looking for what crime? They were seeking his identity, Your Honor, as part but of... But that's not a crime under Texas law. Nor what's the crime? To, nor was he arrested. This is part of the okay. detention, Your Honor that is justified by reasonable suspicion. And contrary to what was being said numerous times in the complaint, it says that the officers approached, asked them how's it going, and asked them to identify himself. Mr. Turner kept videotaping, and Officer Grinnells repeatedly kept asking Mr. Turner if he had the ID with him. They didn't walk up and detain him before he refused to identify himself. He doesn't have to identify himself under Texas law, correct? He doesn't have to in order for it not to be a crime. It's right. not... So what's that's a red the crime they have suspicion to detain him for? This is, it is a crime of perhaps terroristic activities, perhaps. perhaps. Where in his amended complaint does it suggest he was... They had... Does, did, they, did they say to him, we think you're a terrorist? Yes. They said, we have concerns about what's going on outside of our that's facilities. That's not a crime. We have concerns. Right. And you don't have to, under the Terry standard, identify a specific crime. You just have to have a reasonable suspicion under the totality of the circumstances. That criminal activity is afoot. You have that to have... That criminal activity may be afoot. Right. And what, what you're saying that they had... The criminal activity they were investigating was terrorism. If... Do you agree we have to accept his allegations are true for the dismissal? Yes. Okay. He said, they said, we're putting you in the car to make you sweat. This is what happens to people who don't give us ID. He said that. You're stuck with that at this stage. How can that possibly, in the last 30 years, justify an arrest or even a detention to make you sweat? Again, on the... Even accepting that standard, um, it, it is not uh, relevant under qualified immunity law or Fourth Amendment law, the evil intentions or evil motive of the police well, officer. 30 so years even ago, the Supreme something. Court said you can't detain for punitive purposes. Sounds like make you sweat is punitive. Has to be for investigative. Our court over and over again has said there's got to be an investigative purpose once you detain bank robbery, whatever. And, and if we accept, it may be provable later on, but he says they were doing it to make him sweat. So I have two answers to your question, Your Honor. One, under the Fourth Amendment, uh, and I cite a case, U.S. v. Goodwin, out of the Seventh Circuit, which cites a, numer a number of Supreme Court cases, Indianapolis v. Edmond, Florida v. J.L., Illinois v. Lidster, where they say, in, in essence, there's a sliding scale. If the crime uh, that's being concerned, that's that, that the officers are concerned about, is significant enough, the level of suspicion can be lower. And in this case, I would love to recount the, the history uh, that I put forth in my brief, but I know you know it already, of what these officers were fear, fearful of, including the events in the very days before this happened. That may be true, but we, we can't assume that. That's guessing. We, right, we have to take his allegations as true, that the officers come up and say to him, you won't give us ID? Okay. You're going to make you sweat. No, what his complaint says is that when he refused to give ID repeatedly, the officer says, and he asked the officer, why are you detaining me? Or why are you arresting me? The officer says, we're not arresting you. We're not accusing you of a crime. We're simply detaining you to try to determine your identity. And under... That doesn't work for, for Terry in Tex under Texas law. They can't detain him to get his identity unless... The only basis under Texas law you can get identity cards is if you have a lawful arrest. Let me try again on that one, Your Honor. 
we're not arresting him for failing to identify under a statute. That's not what's going on. Under you're not even admitting an arrest. Under Terry, I'm sorry, you're just Your Honor. a detention. Correct, Your Honor. You said you're not arresting him. There never was. No, there was never an arrest. Nor was there an allegation that a crime had been committed for what failing to identify. What case in your best case there wasn't an arrest? Okay. What's, just give me a case anywhere close to these facts. He's not arrested. Other than the Sanders case that I submitted with my 28-J letter, Your Honor, the Heibel case, which analyzes the statute you're talking about. But Heibel is a stop and identify case. Yes, Your Honor. And the Supreme Court struck down. But, but we're confused. What's your best case just that you can put someone in a car, put up the windows, and keep them for any amount of time if the alleg at a dismissal stage when no one says why? Um, in <laughs> just give me your case that says that's not an arrest. One second. In United States versus Sharp, they stated that extending a detention in order to continue the purposes of the detention, especially in light of the fact that the suspect is refusing to cooperate, is causing the problem himself, they're not going to view that as a problem to extend the detention long enough to complete what was being sought there. And like the, Your Honor mentioned, bringing in a drug dog, bringing in a fingerprinting device has been held to be reasonable. Holding somebody long enough who won't identify himself to bring in a fingerprinting device. The drug held. dog because there's reasonable suspicion of narcotics activity. Yes. What's the reasonable suspicion of what here? Again, back to the reasonable suspicion is the reason they confronted him in the first place. There had been a call that he's outside of a police facility videotaping the security gate and, and cars entering and leaving police officers in their private vehicle. No different than the reasons we don't allow videotaping in this very building, Your Honor, is for security concerns. That they had, in the building, that they had a, they had no one saying he could go into the police station and film. But if you're standing across the street in Lafayette Square, you're telling me we could you could be detained for filming our courthouse? If, if there is a gate through which the judges we have a front door, leave, we have a front door. You're saying if someone's is, across the street on the sidewalk, the police can reasonably stick him in a trooper car and put the windows up? If there is a security measure, that's what that's why states are passing uh, homeland uh, home, uh, homeland sec security statutes. Right, those are all time, place, and manner. Absolutely, right. the police could do that. Three hundred foot buffer. That they didn't say that. We don't have a, that going on here. They never asked the man, "Could you move on?" But the reason those statutes are allowed is because the Fourth Amendment allows it. And what we're talking about here is the Fourth Amendment reasonableness of an officer conducting an investigation of into something that he finds to be suspicious. Com combined with, the cases say, evasive conduct, evasive answers, failing to identify can all contribute to the reasonable suspicion of an officer. And so when they approach him, they probably had reasonable suspicion at that point. Certainly when he acted evasively, refused to identify himself. Evasively, the Supreme Court tells people, don't walk away, don't run, say as little as possible and you can't get in trouble. What did he say that was evasive? He just said, he gave them the citation to the correct Texas law. He said, read your own law, 3801. I don't have to give you my identity. That's all he said. What's evasive about 30, that? 3801 is a red herring, Your Honor. There is no allegation that he was being arrested. So in his allegation, fact. what did he do that was evasive? Give me the paragraph in the complaint. He refused to cooperate with the investigation. Refused he refused to, to identify himself. And if you have reasonable suspicion to detain somebody, you can continue that detention long enough to call in a fingerprint scanner the law is clear that you can do that, Your Honor. They can detain, the, the police can detain Texans who stand on the law and they say, you just got to wait till we get a fingerprint scanner because you didn't answer the question that the law says you don't have to answer. That's absurd. If, if you have reasonable suspicion to investigate, Your Honor, if you have reasonable suspicion that there's drug activity, you can hold them long enough to call in a dog. If you have reasonable suspicion that there is uh, crime afoot and you're, you're seeking identity, which is a, a fundamental government interest. On the First Amendment, us. how is this case different? Moving to the First Amendment, how is this case any different than the abortion buffer zone case? Before we case? leave the arrest, let me ask you, at which point did Turner request a supervisor? Turner did not request a supervisor. There's an allegation that he did which is why Mr. Driver was called to come. My understanding was that the officers who were out there trying to do their job, they were called to a scene and they were trying to figure out what was going on, didn't know what to do and they called their supervisor. 
for some further guidance. And, and all they did was approach Mr. Turner and say, look, we're not accusing you of a crime necessarily. We're not saying you're under arrest. We're just trying to figure out what's going on. He didn't cooperate. They said, well, hold on. They put him in the car. They called the supervisor, who in the complaint plaintiffs admit came immediately, that the detention was very brief. When uh, the lieutenant got there, he interviewed everybody, decided, well, okay, whether he had the right to detain him any longer or not, whether he had the right to call in a fingerprint scanner or not, under these facts, we'll let him go. But these officers um, uh, were just trying to figure out what was going on, and that's when they called the supervisor, is my understanding. But trying to figure out what's going on isn't trying to solve a crime. And I thought the facts as to driver was he shows up, then he's according, I mean, the allegations may be untrue, but I thought Turner at least alleges the driver says, you're right, but then he doesn't release them. He goes back to the others and talks. So the guy's still detained. Isn't that the allegation? I might have missed your question, Your Honor. He, he... Driver shows up, the supervisor, and he at some point talks to Turner, and he says, you're right, at least Turner says he said that. Oh, he did say and that. then he didn't release them. So that sounds like personal involvement. He has knowledge, and he acquiesces in the detention. He alleges that Driver said that. But we have to accept the allegation is true. And, and then Driver released them? Or, or the well, other. he went and talked to his colleagues. I mean, you may think that's not a significant amount of time, but the law doesn't give him that opportunity, at least at a dismissal stage. I do want to say that Mr. Uh, Galindo will address okay. Lieutenant Driver. On the First Amendment, how is this any different than the unanimous Supreme Court telling Massachusetts, you can't restrict people's sidewalk activity, however dislikable and dangerous it might be? I don't know that it went that far, Your Honor, but the difference here is that under the circumstances, as the courts have said, the times as they exist and the recent attacks on not just police, but police stations themselves, an, an attack on Dallas with high caliber weapons and pipe bombs in the recent months had police on, on high alert. They, they see somebody out there filming a secured gate through which they drive their personal automobiles, have questions, approach him, question him, and detain him for just long enough to try to figure out um, his identity. On the First Amendment, is your position there is no First Amendment right? It's like obscenity, it's like a true fet, or that there is, we should do what all the other circuits that I'm aware of has done, have done and said there is, but it wasn't clearly established for your clients. Which of the two are you arguing? Well, the First Amendment is interesting. Certainly, for purposes of my clients, it's not clearly established in this circuit, um, and, and that's the end, end of the story. That's the end of it as, as far as my clients. Is there any circuit law that has said that the, why shouldn't we make it clear now to help police and everyone understand that as of now, it is a right? Well, I think that's an interesting question, but what does it mean, especially in the facts of this case? Like you, you mentioned, this is not a case where somebody's out filming police activity in the, in the typical sense. He wasn't interested in filming uh, the, as it turns out, the security gate per se. He was interested in what, what reaction he would get, and that's what he cared about. Um, and there is, interestingly, a line of cases, and, the, and they cite one of them. They cite a uh, case out of New York called Higginbotham, um, and, and it alludes to, and there's another more specific case called Fields versus City of Philadelphia, 166 F SUP 3rd 528, which talks about a line of cases that says filming in and of itself is not necessarily expressive conduct, even if you're filming the police. If you're filming the police as a matter of protest or as a matter of criticism, then that's expressive conduct. But if all you are, as he refers to himself as, and that's the word the case uses, is a hobbyist out there rolling film, that that in and of itself is not necessarily expressive conduct. So to have a rule that all filming of all police at all times, I think that goes broader than any rule that has been enunciated so far. And I think you do have to look at the circumstances of the case before you come up with a rule.